What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So let's take some time to talk about AMC because I didn't actually um, do any type of follow up to the earnings call that we did yesterday. And we all know we have some really, really exciting news, some really, really major news um, with this when it's related to accepting Shiba Inu, accepting Dogecoin, all of the different things that they're looking to do in the coming year um, and the next year after that and the future you know, after that. So I wanted to talk about AMC a little bit and uh, just break down this overall 90% retail trader ownership, which is insane. You know, the retail investors obviously own the float. It's great to be able to see that, but I want to talk about it a little bit, just discuss it. We're going to go through what the price did today and the expectation that we were, I thought we were going to see something today. But then again, as I started to think about it, I was like, well, why should I think that it's going to do anything different? So anyways, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more videos just like this one. I don't really do many stock updates because there's a ton of things going on in crypto. But if you guys want more of this, feel free to let me know and we can always do a little bit more of this. And also like the video to let me know that you want to see it because if you're liking it, if you're viewing it, then it makes me want to do it more because I know that you want to see it. But anyways, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and dive into this. If you want to follow me on Twitter, feel free to follow me on Twitter. I don't have many stock updates, but I do plan on doing a lot more um, when it, uh, in regards to different positions that are going to move as well as cryptocurrencies. So if you want to follow my uh, uh, my Twitter, feel free to follow me. Link is in the description or just search Perry 8K and you'll you'll find it. But let's go through the price a little bit first before we go through any other data and what the what the expectation of it was. Now, if you weren't familiar or you didn't see the um, or hear, I guess, the earnings call, there were a couple of things that were important in that earnings call. One, the understanding of selling merch, right? That should have been implemented from the beginning because people wanted to buy the merch no matter what it was. If it just said AMC on it, if it was just a plain T-shirt and then the tag said AMC on it, people wanted to support the business to basically help them get to a point to where they you know can pay off you know debt and uh, get to a a sound level to where they don't have to worry about that and they could start worrying about um new business ventures and you know upgrading theaters and all this other type of stuff so that was great to be able to see that uh, also with the dogecoin and shiba inu news being able to accept that that's big for dogecoin and shiba inu um, which we did see a little bit of an increase but then we saw um everything fall uh just after that um but the main news that we got from here and that everybody was hype around, hype around was the 90% uh, retail ownership of AMC, of the outstanding shares. 90% is uh, held by you know retail investors. And I've been saying this from the past. Like I said, I believe that we still own a lot of the float while a lot of people in the comment section and even in the chats and all of that were basically saying, no, I don't believe we do. You see how far it has fallen. You see it came from 72 all the way down to where it is now. Well, people are buying this thing up and people are holding it. And Adam Aaron just confirmed that. And people are like, what if he's lying? What if he's not telling the truth? You can't lie in a situation like that, right? That's that's ran by a number of people, a number of executives, a number of people that have to say, yes, this is okay to say. You end up saying it and it has to be it has to be true, right? You're going to get tested on it. They're going to come back at you and say, how is that possible? And you're going to have to give any type of proof that you have for that, which I would imagine that if anybody does have that data, it would be AMC themselves that are able to do a manual count rather than going through, you know, a count by, you know, uh, any other way. Um, so it's great to be able to see that and hear that. Um, but what we need to understand is what does that really mean, right? 90% held by retail traders, that means that we are buying and we are holding the position and then people are buying more. As it is falling, all of this negativity is not built by the fact that we're seeing people sell, right? We might see people sell in an instance to where they're trying to scare people out of the position, but majority of us are holding and most of us are buying more. So it just looks stronger and stronger every day while people are questioning if it's at 60%. I said in the beginning, um, actually, when all of this was falling down, it got down to 15 or so. I said that this would get to or that we're holding 70 to 75%. And a lot of people were like, ah, 70, 75% still seems a little bit high for how far it's fallen. And I was like, I, I think we're still holding quite a bit. It just seems that way. And what I'm seeing in the amount that they're shorting 
they're literally doubling and tripling if you look over at the chart exchange data, which a lot of people are ignoring, right? People are looking at the Ortex data and understanding that that is the short interest, but what does the chart exchange data mean? And that's what I like to focus on. So let's go into what uh, AMC uh, did today. So uh, today we see uh, an opening price of $18.01, which was down from the previous close. We do see that the low was $17.31. And now we're looking at a high of $18.69 to where it did increase about 1% or 20 cents. Over the after hours, it is down about 1% there. We do see 34 million shares worth of volume in the day. Now, when we look at what did happen in the day, the movement, right? It seems like consistent movement. It doesn't seem like anything that's manipulated here, but understand what happens in the beginning. As that news comes out, as people get hype around it, in order to take them uh, away from that buy button, you know, take their finger away from the buy button and say, wait, I'm gonna hold off until it starts increasing again. You short the position. That's basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna short the position and they keep doing it over and over and over again. And people are like, well, how, if they're shorting so much, how is the the amount of short interest or the amount of shorted shares still staying around 20? Well, uh, let's go into that right now, right? We looked at everything that happened in the day. It's very uh, straightforward. Uh, we saw increases, we saw decreases, right? We're not looking for anything uh, short term, um, well, really short term. We're looking for something that's going to happen over the next you know couple of months, next couple of weeks. We're looking for larger movements. So uh, let's go into the chart exchange data. Let's see if I do have that somewhere here. Um, so first we're going to look at the Ortex data. Let's look at this. And the Ortex data shows it at 20.57%, right? 105 million shares, which doesn't really line up with a lot of things. Cause you know, we're, we own a ton of the float, right? But 105 uh, million shares there. You do see that they borrowed 6.74 million shares versus returning another uh, or 1.7 or almost 2 million shares. Um, so if you look at this here, we have an increase of short interest at 2.14%. Utilization maxed out. You're looking at the uh, the shares on loan at 116.23 uh, million. Um, so when we look at that and we look at the amount that goes over on the chart exchange data, it's a little bit different of a story, right? Because you're looking at over the last day, which was the first, 67 or 68% was short, 68% of short volume in the day. That means 70% of the volume, not including buying and selling, 70% of the volume was attributed to shorts. This doesn't mean that they're holding shorts. This means that they're shorting, just like if you would buy something and sell something right away. So let's say you're day trading. You buy something at $10, you sell it at uh, $11. Well, you bought you bought those shares and you sold those shares. So really, you're looking at um, the shorts that are going through and buying and selling, right? You're looking at those go through in both sides. So it's a thousand and a thousand. So you're really, with the shorts, you're really just jabbing at people. So what they tend to do is they're gonna short this thing heavily in certain instances to take us off the buy button. And then they're gonna keep doing it until it, we get a reaction from people, which either they'll take a, a loss um, or they will actually get a gain by getting a reaction out of some people, right? If you have a reaction out of just a couple of people after they, they short the position, right? You're gonna see that drop even more, right? And then what they're gonna do is cover it. And if they cover it, you're gonna see it start to go up. And that's really exactly what we are seeing, you know, um, in, in the chart. We look here, they're shorting this thing. They decide that they're gonna jab at us. They're gonna keep shorting it, keep shorting it with big numbers, get reactions out of us, get it all the way down here. And then they start covering slowly, right? They start covering slowly. You see some buy orders come in, you see some sell orders. You don't see as much that goes through the market in the day. And then what's gonna happen is we're not gonna see as much volume at the end of the day. So no matter how much they're covering, we're not gonna see that coupled with more buying pressure. Does that make sense? So we do see that buying pressure here, which all you have to do in order to, you know, uh, combat that or fight that is uh, short some more. And that's generally what we're seeing is every time we get in any type of rhythm, they take us off that rhythm. We're creating higher highs, higher lows um, after aggressively or not aggressively selling off, but falling off from the beginning of the day. Typically, we're going to see a bounce. And if we start to see a rise in that we create a higher high, higher low, um, and then all of a sudden we're taking off our game right here with this large candlestick bringing us back to the, the 15 moving average. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at those short positions. So 
this is why uh, it's been falling is because you're getting slight reactions out of people, but they consistently short it. It's not something that they're holding overnight. It's something that they're shorting and throwing a lot of negativity at it. If you have 80% of the volume in the day, go negative on the negative side, right? You're, you're covering or sorry, you're uh, shorting the position and then you have cells that are going through, right? You, you couple the shorts with the sell options or sell opportunities. And now you're looking at 80% of the volume in the day that's going towards the negative and 20% that's going towards the positive. Of course, you're going to see it drop, right? That's just how it goes. So it, it's definitely tough to see. It's tough to bring in, but it, what's crazy is the fact that we have 90% of retail traders that are holding this position, that are strong on this position, that are bullish on this position. And I knew that you guys didn't give up on this. You knew that I didn't give up on this. You knew that I'm still holding my position. I'm still ready for this thing to blow. And uh, while all of these people are, are you know, bought in at some of these levels here, saw this rising, bought in at some of these levels, we still hold for you as well. Like we're still here. We understand what this play is. We understand that you guys are holding now and you're, you're basically taking on that unrealized loss while we are still sitting sort of pretty, right? I'm not sitting pretty because it's at $18 and my cost basis is 26. But, you know, people like like us that bought in at $8 or bought in at $5 or bought in at $9, we obviously hold for you guys. Now, this is not financial advice. This is merely just my opinion. And my opinion could go a long way. It can mean nothing, right? And this is all speculation because we don't we don't really know exactly what's happening. All we see is the numbers and the numbers that are in front of me. I like to analyze those numbers. So make sure you guys hit the like button. Let me know what you think about this overall situation and what's going on with AMC. Is the play still there? Where do you think it's going to? Do you think it's going to a lot stronger of a number? Do you think it's going to that 100K mark? Do you think it's going to 15K, 20K? What's your, what's your number that you believe that AMC is going to? Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. I'm so happy that you guys are here that I'm able to talk about this. I don't talk about the stock market much anymore. I really want to uh, just show your support and let me know that you want to hear more about it and we can definitely do it. Um, but I'm going to get out of here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.